worship and come again to you. Everything was going well. Yes. Notice that Isaac never at one time became disobedient to his father. No. Never. Never at one time did Isaac say, I'm going to stay with the young men. Yeah. You go yonder. I, I see people in the work of God that they'll say with their spirit, and sometimes they say it with their words. No, you go. Hallelujah. You go and be in the mission service tonight. Mm. I'm not. Mm. You, you, you praise the Lord. I, I don't feel like it. Right. You go and pray for the sick around the altar. I don't, I'm not up to it. Come on, brother. You, 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 you go down here and, and I actually see sometimes people casually talking while we're praying for a miracle to take place. Yeah. I, I, really, I feel like telling them, go home. Really? Don't stay here. Go home because you are disobedient to God. Amen, brother. You're not going. See, Isaac went with Abraham. He didn't stop. He didn't detour. He was obedient. He was a son. They'd been traveling three days. And yet they had to go yonder and worship. And Isaac never said, Dad, Father, look, it's too hard. It's, uh, uh, it, I, I see a lot of that. Now, I don't know if it's leaving us. I see the Lord culling and weaning and, and taking that out. Because uh, he's going to winnow that out. Uh, where where you, will, you don't have a conversation while there's prayer for the sick. Amen. You, you don't go up and take a favorite buddy and buddy up to him. And, you don't wander out in the congregation Amen. if you're an anointed called elder. Amen. You're around the altar of prayer. Amen. You follow uh, where Abraham goes. You're a son. Praise you're obedient. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You're connecting God yeah. with the earth. Oh, what a privilege it is. Yeah. We may have a connection here tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, pray we'll have another connection yeah. here tonight from heaven to the earth, yeah. from God the Father to the sons yeah. in the house. Praise the name of the Lord. Pray that the glory that belongs to the house, belongs to the sons, yeah. will come in here and touch people and help people and move upon people. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's go yonder and worship. Yes. And I will come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son, and said, you, you carry it, Isaac. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. Isaac never said, don't give me that wood. I'm not following you. Don't put that load on me uh, until we can get the church in divine order to where everyone will be willing to carry the wood as a son, even though they can't see fully the sacrifice yet, even though they don't have the last answer. But yet by faith, by faith, you're justified by faith. Yes. Everything you do is to be by faith. Yes. I don't see it. Go by faith. Right. I don't feel it. Go by faith. Yes. I'm not sure of it. Go by faith. Yes. I don't think it'll come out. Go by faith. Yes. We've got to become a faith-believing, yes. faith-living yes. sons of God. Yes. On this earth until God yes. leads us where he wants to. Yes. And leads the blind where they don't even know where they're going. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Amen. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? My Lord, my God. And we're going to be saying that till, uh, before we reach the point of where God lets us appear as he is and see him as he is. There's going to be some questions. Brother really like that, honey. Sunday, Sunday, but God taught you a lesson. You'll never do that again. You and Vanessa will never do that again. Amen. Your household will never do that again. Sunday, you would give it in and said, well, I may need to make plans 
for my demise and my ending. Hallelujah. And, I, and a wise father, yes. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, it looks like this is getting worse. I'm not able to work. I'm falling from ladders. I can't, I'll get to where I can't hold the hammer. I, I can't, I can't do the work anymore. And they were talking over as a family. But that won't happen again. No. Because God gave them an answer. Brother, that's the truth. But they were like Isaac. Yes. He was wondering, I see the wood, and I see the fire, and I see the knife, but where's the sacrifice? Hallelujah. And we've got to come to the point where we're exactly like uh, Isaac. Listen to God say the back to us. When we reach one of those tests, and we're tried, and it looks like there's no way that we can see the answer, and everything is dark, you can bank on it that Isaac thought in his mind, something is up. I don't see a lamb. I don't see a sacrifice. I don't see a turtle dove. I don't see a pigeon. I don't see a goat. All I see is some wood and a knife and fire. And his mind began to think, sure. it's over with. Sure it did. It's over with. I don't know what's coming here. My father is a strange father this day. But he was and we may be going to worship, but I'm wondering yeah. how it's going to come out. Yeah. Come on, brother. Jesus. But Abraham said to him, yeah. Abraham said, here yeah. I am, my son. Yeah. And he said, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? I love this scripture. Praise God. Yes. Verse 8, and Abraham said, my son, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Praise God. Amen, amen. Don't you know that uh, Isaac breathed a great big sigh of relief and said, well, the mystery is solved. I know that I'm not going to be that because I'm not a lamb. I'm his son, but he, he realized right away, had faith in his father, because he would, for, uh, God would, for, his father said, God will provide for himself. Praise the name of the Lord. All I need is an answer from God, and I have an answer from God tonight, that it doesn't matter what is facing, God will provide. I said, God will provide. I'm not leaving that. Some of, you, some of you right now need to get that. Some of you need to get that. Some of you need to get this. Some of you need to realize God will provide. Sunday night was a turning point with me in this church after 56 years and facing many obstacles and many problems and many times when it looked like the vacuum cleaner of time and age and trouble and religious problems and upset conditions and the world we live in was going to vacuum the church clean of faith and sons of God and take people out to where there was nobody left and be like uh, uh, be like uh, the prophet uh, uh, Elijah uh, here I am Lord sitting under the tree weeping here I am the only one produced down to me there's nobody else left and did you know that spirit will take over a church? It'll take over you. But you've got to get away from that and hear the voice of God just like Abraham did. Abraham heard the voice of God and God said, I will provide. And Abraham said to his son, God will provide. Praise the name of the Lord. We should be so built up in faith tonight and courage in our church that no matter what it is, we can say as a group and roar it out with the Holy Ghost coming down upon us uh, and spirit led and spirit filled uh, and the power of God yes, upon us, uh, shaking us, uh, praise God, uh, moving in us. Uh, we should be so fired up. Fired up.
Steve Buller and Diane back in service tonight. And then the Brother Buddy, we miss Brother Buddy. Deep in our hearts here. Yes. Brother Buddy, you're missed when you're not. Yeah. We love you. That's right. Anyway. That's right. That's right. And you tell the devil I said so. Praise God. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you know, I run into those devils every now and then. Yeah. I yeah. tell them. Yeah. And uh, just let them know that you're loved. Brother, brother, brother. Praise God. And uh, we, we've got uh, we've got Sister Janet back here. Uh, she just hasn't been coming that much that long but she loves the lord she loves the church and uh, we will, uh, i told her daughter there to get those girls that sing with her back here we miss them Amen. get them back here on sunday afternoons uh, so i can talk to them i tell them i want to tell them we have need of them more than the mega church does praise our god amen sister janet uh, somebody get her a microphone back there and uh, Get on your feet there. and You had a word, didn't you? Something to say. Yes. All right, say it. Praise God. There's there's a microphone right there by you. Yes. Amen. And then the rest God of the church. Praise God. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I do love God because I want to love him. Yes. But by his goodness with me, yes. he makes me crazy for him. Yes. Yes. supposed to be crazy right now. Yeah. I, I losing it before because of my situation of the problem that I was facing. I couldn't take it on my own and I lose it. Guess what? Oh, Jesus happy himself to me. Amen. And he told me selfish people is the one who's depressed who got depression. I couldn't understand him. I said, I'm not selfish. I love everyone. I try to help everybody. So I'm not selfish. But when I think about it, it's true. It was me, myself, and I. So I was thinking about myself. And that's why I, lo I was losing it. And he told me to get up. Go help people who don't have any any help. So my husband and I, we go to nursing home and I volunteer. Yes, and I help people, I try to feed them and people who need to go to the doctor, who don't have anyone to take them to the doctor, I take them to the doctor. I, I try to offer everyone my help and guess what and I get out of my depression Praise the Lord. doctor couldn't do anything for me I thought I was going to die and I left a letter for my children I didn't think I was going to make it and now I try to I help people who have depression now. God is good. And after he told me, okay, to go to remind to people that is coming back soon. So I go in in the train in Miami, everywhere. We hold on posters on the street who said to repent, Jesus Christ is coming back soon. And one time, when my husband and I was evangelized in Miami, yeah. your Lord. Yeah. guess what? That's why I try to encourage Christian people to talk to other people about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because Satan has his people who's evangelized on the street too. Yeah. Yeah. And there is a lady who coming out with that paper. She was passing out with that paper. Remember, so many of us don't know anything about the word. And that's how the enemy got us, because so many people don't know anything about God. That's right. 
So she was passing out with that paper on the street to many people. I want someone, someone else to read it for me, please. What it said. Come in. Amen. The truth of 666 in the mark of those who have been chosen by God to reign in life. That's the light of this city. Knowing <laughs> that we are saved forever, blessed with every spiritual blessing, and that nothing can separate us from his love. Praise God. The truth of 666 and why we shouldn't be afraid. It is number of man, not the devil, and there is wisdom in the number. Revelation 13, 18. It is a number of prosperity. 1 Kings 10, 14, and 2. 2 Chronicles 9, 13. It is a number that identifies the children of God. Ezra 2, 13. It is a sign of love for God, both in the mind and the body. Song of Solomon 8, 6. It is the sign of immortality, honor, and riches of man, Christ Jesus, Proverbs. I think it's 318. Do you hear that? Yes. Yes. Said no, very soon something going to happen. And there is not only one person, many people doing that on the street today. And while the place you're working, you don't talk to anyone about Jesus Christ coming back soon. I could not understand when that lady gave me that paper. She said, okay, that number is a number of prosperity. That's true, because when you have the mark of the beast, you're going to be able to buy, to sell, you're going to have a good life. But at the same time, that means you, you choose Satan. There is no joke anymore. There is no joke anymore. God bless you. Wait for my husband and I. We're on the street. It's not playing. Satan attacking us so many kind of the way. But devil is a loser and he's a liar. Keep us and your prayer. God bless you. Amen. Very good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Week long, the Lord has been talking to me about how to host the Holy Ghost yes. and how to welcome Him into your life. Yes. And we started, Sister Marlowe started with the song, Holy Spirit, I appreciate you. And I felt it, and I felt the anointing. And I have to obey the Lord tonight and yes. explain to you that how we can host the Holy Ghost in our lives. It's that relationship. You can come to church five times a week, but if you do not build the relationship with Jesus Christ, you will never make it. And so let's go to John chapter 1, verse 32. And it said, when the Holy Ghost came upon John Bay record of the Lord, the Holy Spirit coming unto Jesus, and it said, it abode on him. Amen? So how do you host the Holy Ghost? You keep him inside you and you welcome him every day in your finances, in your health, in your, everything you do. Amen. He's so much a part of my life. I've got an insatiable love for him. And, and it's increased and it's increased over the years and it's the strongest. I just love where I'm at with the Lord because I love him. I want to speak to him. I wake up talking to him. I talked to him the other night when I was sick with the flu. I was so sick. And I had to be up at 3.15 and I had to go to the island at 3.15 siesta key. And I said, Lord, what am I going to do? I'm so sick. John and I had to be up early. And I, I saw a vision of him. And he came across the, the glass doors and he was running in his white robe. And I said, Lord, what are you saying? He's saying the breaker anointing has entered your house right that's now. It, that's it. And he's the break anointing. He's the breakthrough God. Amen. And I said, Lord, if this is what you're saying, then you need to heal me right now yeah. so that I can go and do my job. Amen. You know that he walked into my room and he touched me. Yeah. And I was instantaneously yeah. healed. Yeah. And I, I drove without any sleep. It was like I'd slept eight hours. I have been fine ever since. 